I'm, uh, and then you have a glass mask, 100% oxygen, and I'm claustrophobic. I hate this stuff. I'm, I don't want to throw up either. If I throw up, it's right here. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> no, don't throw up. <laughs> and I said, that's enough. Take me back. Take me back. He goes, are you sure? Yeah. And then he goes, Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe. I go, yes. He goes, you fly. I fly a MiG. How? Actually, it's really easy. There's only two. He's like, up and down and left and right. That's all there is. Really easy, like a, like a listener cough. So, I flew it a little bit, and then I got really sick, almost throwing up, and then I said, that's it, that's it, take me back. And then, on the way down, he goes, Dr. Zhang, I said, yeah, emergency, emergency. He said it twice. <laughs> so, I'm almost peeing in my pants, and I'm, I thought, this is it, I'm gonna die. And he goes, only joking. <laughs> <laughs> Russian, I'm gonna kill you when we land. <laughs> okay. I'm jumping here because, okay, I went to space, I went to Antarctica, I went to every place in the world I want to go. What do I do next? I want to travel inside of me, like what's, what's inside of me, that my mind, my soul, uh, spiritual nature. Plus, being a scientist, I had these scientific questions. Reincarnation, is it bullshit or is there any scientific evidence for this? So, make a long story short, right, because it's not easy to become a real monk. But I'll make it real short. I found this old herbalist, 80 something years old in Thailand, amazing old man. And I, told, I speak Thai, so I said, I want to be a monk. He goes, no problem. His best friend is the boss. He takes me to his best friend, who is the chief monk who looks like Yoda, about this tall. And he, <laughs> he smiles when I come. And I, he says, I saw you in my dream. <laughs> and then, and then he says, you were sitting under the mango tree, so your name is Ma Mua, which, means, which means mango in Thai. So I was Brother Ma Mango. And then I had so much fun in there. Why? Because I'm the only guy with outside life uh, experience. So he was one of the directors. And he said, you're in charge of education and money. OK. He says, first of all, what do we do with this money? What money? He opens the door, and there's cash from here to the top in the whole room. Millions of dollars. He says, I don't know what to do with it. I said, okay, we'll put it in the bank first. And the next, because I want you to be in charge of all education. Okay, first educate the monks. About what? Outside world. Okay, oh, had a circle, right? This is, this is also plus you guys, like do brown bag lunches with other departments. Entertain ideas, thoughts about, what do you think about melanoma? Oh, well, maybe try this. You, know. you don't know where the idea comes from. So I'm sitting down with these monks, and what do you want to talk about? I said, brother, brother Mango, have you ever like touched a woman? <laughs> I said, of course, <laughs> many. And I said, can you tell us what that's like? I said, imagine the most beautiful, most nice scented flower, and you touch it, and it's like silk. And when you touch it, it makes you shiver with excitement, and the woman responds in a certain way, and they're like. <sighs> <laughs> and I said, that's all for today. <laughs> like, no, more, more. <laughs> so I tortured them with my educational classes in many ways. <laughs> and then one question I wanted to answer was, now I have full access uh, to the secret Buddhist libraries, which normal people can't go. And I got all the books about um, reincarnation. Like, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical, like, come on, really? I could be, but I want to see what's out there. Check it out online. I was shocked. The University of Virginia went to Southeast Asia and found thousands of children under six years old who remembered their past lives. And they followed a lot of these children to where they said they came from. And they said, that's my house. I died right in front there, and that's my room. Holy crap. So I, there actually was some scientific evidence. You can check it out if you like. So I wanted to do some other things. He's not very popular now, but <laughs> back then he was quite popular. And uh, you know, he's, he's also my junior classmate, so I play golf with him sometimes. And I did set a Guinness World Record. I was determined. I played golf for 24 hours straight like an idiot. And uh, that's me over <coughs> here. This is in <coughs> But I don't just do it for nothing. What happened was the number one ski resort in Japan called Niseko, they have they're really, like a lot of Taiwanese go there to ski. 
But in the summer, they have no customers. They don't know what to do. So they asked me, do you have any creative ideas? Lateral thinking, yeah, well, you have golf courses, right? I said, how about we play all the golf courses and set the Guinness World Record? Then the whole world will hear that this golf course is there too, not only ski resort. So that's what we did, and then you know, the customers increased a lot. So I did it for free. And you know, this guy, you know who he is? Uh, I had no idea who he is. Li Fei? Li uh, Fei? Yeah, Zhang Fei. Huh? <laughs> so, I call him Yan Fei. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping in the, on the beach in Hualien, and all of a sudden there's this motorcycle. Rah, 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 rah. I said, hey, shut up. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. And he gets off and he goes, do you know who I am? <laughs> I said, I don't give a shit who you are. <laughs> He goes, I'm the number one star of Taiwan. I said, no wonder nobody knows who you are. Because I, I never saw you before. And he goes, hmm, you're interesting. I said, well, I mean, you're not very interesting. He goes, well, it's 6 o'clock, but can I buy you a beer? So we drank in the morning. <laughs> OK, my heroes. Jane Goodall. This, who knows Jane Goodall? Because you have to get to know her. Yeah. She's one of the most amazing humans on this earth. Why? First of all, when she was a little girl, somebody gave her a, a doll of a monkey, and she fell in love with this thing. She didn't know what it was. She was in a rich family in Northern England. And she says, one day I'm going to work with these little things. And she changed the entire scientific community thinking of apes, which was incredible in the 60s, because there was this little English woman, and she started giving them names and observing their behavior and joining their family and everybody thought she's nuts, really. But she's the one that convinced the whole world that, hey, we're 99.8% related DNA and behavior is the same, they're aggressive, they kill, all this stuff. She, she changed her thinking. So, you know, like she, she's won every award you can imagine, but that's not enough. Now she did something that's amazing, which I'm going to tell you about. So here's another important thing, right? You see the same things everybody else sees, but you see something different. And that's an important concept in science, right? What, what did Einstein say about craziness? It's the people who do the same thing every time and expect a different result. You know, in science, you've got to look for what's, what's different, what's different. It's usually luck that you find it. Luck, serendipity, <coughs> lateral thinking, we already talked about that. So I just want to quickly mention this Jane Goodall thing. She is changing the world more than anybody in, this, in the whole planet. She started this thing called Roots and Shoots. Why? Roots creep on the ground, make a firm foundation. Shoots are very weak, but they, to get the light, they break open brick walls. She thought, OK, it's too late for the adults. Look at, look at the greed and the, and the destruction going on. She's going to start the world's largest NGO for young people and children. And now, in over 200 countries, with several hundred thousand children, they go in the community and they clean the community and they do eco ecology and they learn about recycling. And, and they tell their parents, hey, dad, you shouldn't be smoking. Or, hey, you didn't recycle. Much more power than the government telling them, right? If the kids are telling you. So this is what she did, and it's, it's really working. Incredible, yeah? This is thinking way beyond what normal people would think. Serendipity. When you find something that you weren't expecting to find. Well, this is, most of scientific development comes from this. So even, like, this is a recent scientific journal. It should be recognized, serendipitous discoveries are of significant value. Of course! That means, you know, if something funny happens and you don't notice it, then that's, you're, you've missed out your chance, maybe in your whole life. Look at Louis Pasteur, right? Pasteur Institute. Almost as famous as Academicus <laughs> He said, in the field of observation, chance favors only the prepared mind. Well, it's like you guys, right? You studied a lot already to get to this point. So you got to be ready for like something weird happening or accept mistakes or do it on purpose. Try something weird. And I thought, 
Academica Seneca 